let's move on to our, our next speaker, uh, Manuel Matoya. Manuel is a uh, chemical engineer and a master's in business administration. He's worked as project manager for the Asiatic operations with FICOSA International and was technical vice president and member of the board for Tata FICOSA Private Limited in Pune, India, and actually spent three years living in Pune. For the past seven years, Manuel has been the CEO of the automotive cluster of Nuevo Leon in Monterrey, Mexico. This cluster is an organization that uh, includes 80 companies and institutions related to the automotive industry in the northeast region of Mexico. So help me introduce Manuel. Hello, good morning. Uh, thank you very much to IMS for the invitation. And I hope I will not return to air too soon after the el earlier speech. But <laughs> I, I'll try to speak a little bit of how we see the, the manufacturing standards going on in this com more increasingly uh, com competitive market where we are working. So uh, first of all, we see that there are mm, some mega trends in manufacturing technologies that are coming. One is these uh, low-cost sensors that are making that the sensors will be more integrated into all products and processes. Uh, this will come with the production of what is called the big data and after this is the processing of this information. Uh, this data uh, will be used to drive and to update next generation mechanistic process models. Uh, so, and then it became a, a challenge to automatize all this information in order to use it uh, in real time, to take decisions and to connect the, for example, the equipment with the administration and the decision taking. So, what big data is showing to us is that it will come with new challenges for all the manufacturing. These low cost um, sensors will produce a lot of information that we are willing that they will help us to, to be more effective in our production and to be more uh, uh, competitive and productive. So the other idea is the data will follow the product throughout all its life. We are seeing in the automotive industry that maybe in the next future, all the components or the main components of the car can be tracked through all its life. So this will help in the future to understand how are the quality standards of the product and to see how it's its performance. And most probably this will help us to make better components and better cars, obviously. But this, again, will bring new challenges. And one of these important that uh, uh, we want to address today is the need for standardization. Uh, and the need for standardizations brings us to another challenge that is the coordination. Yes, because we always have this problem between the engineering department and the production department. <laughs> this is a traditional problem that we always have. And this will become a, a bigger problem if we want the, the production give us data in every moment that can help us to make better products and to take this business decisions. But outside our manufacturing facilities, we'll see that we need more connection with our suppliers. Imagine that our, our equipment in our plant can connect with the equipment of our suppliers, of our clients, and then the information will flow between all the value chain, 
in real time. And again, this brings new challenges also between, for example, in the automotive industry, between the different brands. The different auto manufacturers will have their own standards. And for example, for a tier one supplier, there will be a challenge to connect information between one customer information with another one. And then if we bring this into countries, it will become a very difficult situation where we have to connect data coming from different equipments, different companies, and different cultures. And all this is to gain more efficiency and interoperability. The problem here is technical, but it's also human. Maybe I would like to go more through the human problem that this is, is bringing to, to us. Who will take the lead for the standardization? We in the automotive industry, we expect that the OEMs will take somehow the lead with the standard setting bodies. Uh, these uh, uh, setting bodies must be neutral associations that can facilitate the process. In the US, we have an example with the National Network for Manufacturing Innovation. So it's a, a neutral body that can help communicate different uh, uh, stakeholders that we all are involved in the same industry, for example. So, before going to, uh, obviously to the technicalities of this, that is not the purpose of my presentation, we have to address this problematic that we have that is more human, no? is that the uh, competitors will have to, to collaborate somehow to establish these standards. The customers will have to collaborate with their suppliers to establish these standards. And through all the value chain, we'll have to, to get to an understanding between everybody to get to these standards. Imagine that each machine and process will have their own data system. In the earlier presentation, we had heard different robotics companies talking about what they are doing. Well, they will somehow have, need to, to connect the data because in a, in a factory, we may have robots of different brands and we'd like them to, to connect their information between each other. Uh, obviously, we'll, we can take the decisions in our own factories, but we cannot take the decisions in the factories of our customers, of our suppliers. So how can we connect the data between everybody in the supply chain? So, and this at the end will also rise the necessity for regulation. So, in a perfect way, in a perfect world, we see that the small and big companies, uh, they communicate very freely. The information and the people, they are knowledgeable of each other. Also, the people are connected with the research organizations and the universities, the capital providers, and the government. This is a perfect but unreal world. Things don't happen like this. In this perfect world, for example, in our automotive industry, we see the value chain, and the information will, will flow freely between the different uh, stakeholders and with the government that can put the correct regulations and the academia that can help us to make research and development. But this don't happen. There's always uh, pro problems of communication between the different stakeholders so the OEMs had their own rules, and the tiers had their own expectations. And then the academics, uh, they are making research in different things that we don't need. And then the government puts regulation that don't help to our competitiveness, and so on. 
So what, what we need, and it's just an, an idea, is to, to propose the cluster concept as a possible solution to overcome this problematic of communication. Companies, government, and academia working together. In yesterday's presentation, see some of them, they have already talked about this. The idea is to put over the table the common problems to look for common solutions. In the case of the standardization, will be a common problem that we'll have to look for a common solution. And we need the neutrality of this party that can help the stakeholders to build the common ground. The cluster concept is something that can help us to, to put together all the parts in the value chain. So these operative problems that we'll, we'll reach, they will bring uh, academic challenges that the universities and research centers will help us or may help us to, to, to tackle. And then we'll need to, to, to work together with the different government bodies to, cre to create the needed poli public policies. So cluster is a, a bridge builder. So when there's problems of communications, we need someone that is neutral, that can understand the problematics between the parties and then bring them together. If we talk about small and medium-sized companies and big customers, sometimes you need someone to build a bridge between them and make the business possible. This is something that we have been doing in our automotive cluster in Nuevo León, uh, because uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of investment coming to Mexico and there are uh, many of these new companies that are just arriving, they complain because there are not enough uh, and correct suppliers. So if we just come and complain, we'll never solve the problem. So as someone mentioned yesterday, what we need is to create this supplier base. So the cluster in this case has helped to address that problem, for example. So putting the correct bridges, we can try to, to get to this ideal world where the information will flow between the parties. In, in our cluster, as I mentioned to you, uh, we have been trying to tackle the common problems through the collaboration between OEMs and the different suppliers from raw materials to the different tiers, and also to communicate with the universities and take their, their help, and also to communicate with the government to take decisions. Working together, that's the, the word, the collaboration. If in our case, it has been a challenge to to work in a, some of you may think that are very simple things, but when you have these uh, market problems that you don't have to solve it, someone has to address them. And we, as an industry, we have to be ready to grab today's opportunity. Which is the opportunity today for the automotive industry in Mexico is that the production is growing very fast. We used to produce uh, uh, around two million cars before the, the crisis. And after the crisis, the Mexico automotive industry had gained a lot of, of, of new models. And today we are producing three million cars per year. And we're expecting to go up to four million by the year 2019. And this is something that is already happening. The OEMs are announcing new plants in Mexico. Just last week, Mercedes-Benz has announced they are going to produce cars in Mexico, along with Nissan. They will produce the Infinity car also in Mexico. And someone told me that this week, another European OEM will announce a new plant in Mexico. I'm not, I'm not sure, but that seems that is happening. So this is the, the opportunity, and we had to work for, to get it uh, to take uh, advantage on this. What's the, 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 the Mexican automotive moment? Is that the different brands have seen 
that Mexico is a, a good place to produce their vehicles. Uh, and we need to, not just to, to offer them the cheap labor, that is not the case no, no more in Mexico, the wages are going up, thanks God, no. But the, the thing is that we need to increase our local content if we want that this industry really helps our economy to grow up. The another challenge that we have is that we have to overcome the famous maquila model. No. Some, sometimes we think of the automotive industry in Mexico like this, no? big plants with a lot of people working because it used to be like this and it's still there in some places of Mexico because there are still uh, big differences in the wages. But what we are looking for is to, to go what Continental had done recently they have inaugurated an engineering center in Guadalajara where they have 600 engineers designing products for the war from Guadalajara. The interesting thing is that these 600 engineers, their average age is 27 years old. See, this is the opportunity that we have today in our country. So, the challenge is to strengthen the, the value chain in Mexico, to be more connected to the world, to build partnerships, to take advantage of our young and capable engineers. And this is the, 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 the very last idea I wanted to share with you. We need to invest in new technologies, integrating these new standards to, to our industry. It's not that we had to wait that the developed world will develop the standards and then we are using them. We have to be part of this because uh, our industry is growing too fast and we want to be part of it. Not just wait that the things will be decided other, uh, in other parts of the world. We, we need to be in that, in, in, in that uh, decision taken part. So the last thing, just to tell you who are we, we are an automotive cluster, uh, a cluster association, uh, where the main Mexican tier one manufacturers are based in Nuevo León, Mexico, uh, in the northeast part of Mexico. And what we are willing is to, to take advantage of this industrial growth that we are having, also to integrate more suppliers in, into this value chain. Uh, today we are working with a triple helix. We have been there almost for eight years. Uh, have been quite successful to bring together different companies. Uh, some are OEMs, others are tier ones, tier two, raw materials manufacturers. Uh, we have the local government working very close with us and also the academia, both the universities and research centers. Uh, Finally, just a, a quick message. I, I just wanted to, sh to, to share this with you because we think that the cluster model can be a useful tool to help us to all this standardization of the processes, that the cluster can be this neutral body to help the different stakeholders to communicate between each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel. So as I said, I think that provides a, uh, another very interesting and different perspective on the uh, requirements and, uh, for standards and presents some interesting challenges to the, uh, to the standards-making organizations to satisfy those, uh, those requirements.